there are a lot of ways that you can get into driving your EV. Of course, you could buy one, which means really finding the one that fits your needs, making a really educated choice, hopefully asking around for some opinions before you do it. You could borrow your friend's EV, which we always recommend as long as you treat that EV well and thank your friend. And another great option, of course, is leasing. But should you lease an EV? Of course, everyone's situation is different, so let's talk about it. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Francie. I hope you're having a very decent, if not amazing day so far. Thank you for tuning in. I mean it. And today we've invited our friend of the Palmcast, Colton, from Out of Spec Detailing to speak about his specific experience leasing a 2021 long range Tesla Model 3. And of course, we also have our friend Max here to add some color as well. So how are you doing, guys? Thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, doing great. Thanks for having us. Doing well. Living in Colorado, one of the best states to buy or lease an EV. You are not wrong. And I want to really get into the details of why that is true. So first, I want to start before we go back in time to when Colton originally made this decision to lease a Tesla, but to start by looking at what the current leasing price is, what the current leasing picture is, especially with Tesla. So I'm going to bring this up. You can go to tesla.com and get here. If you start to put together your order and you can, it immediately brings up all the options that you have. Tesla includes these different incentives that are available to you based on your zip code and other incentives that are either not only state, but also federal. And okay, y'all. So what we see here is that if we have a delivery zip code uh, in Colorado, and what we have here is the Model 3 rear wheel drive and of course there are the dual motor all wheel drive options the long range and the performance but right off the bat i'm seeing that there are twelve thousand five hundred dollars available in tax credits and a lease starting at 329 a month off the bat and we're going to get into the extra details where we have um more basically more information that tesla will provide to include the estimated taxes and fees but okay off the bat what do you think about this kind of pricing I mean, I think the pricing is incredible. That big $329 a month sounds really, really attractive. Now, there's a few things you need to take into consideration with that is your taxes and fees, which I am now glad to see Tesla actually shows those within your basically price adjustment in there. They did, have not previously had this when I just recently purchased my new Model 3 Performance. You kind of have to purchase the car, then get into it within the app after you put down your $250 deposit, and then you can start seeing all this information. I think this is really good for people kind of cross shopping vehicles, very, very important. The other thing to note with this is you're putting a decent amount of money down to basically buy down the cost for your monthly lease there. So I believe that 329 they're quoting is by putting $4,500 down. And then once you add in all of your taxes and fees, it does raise the price a little bit. Interesting. Yeah, so this is definitely something that I think any consumer can benefit from is more information, right? Where Tesla, yeah, has to do more details on the back end to get this data to be able to give you this calculation. But it is really useful to get an accurate photo picture of what you're going to pay because some of the naysayers as well with EVs will say, well, there's cost savings, but there's all these other hidden fees. It's actually going to be more expensive when you buy it, et cetera, et cetera. So just more and more transparent information sharing here is really great. And I have to agree that, I mean, this is a pretty amazing price for a very quality EV with a great infrastructure and makes it quite accessible for leasing uh, a Tesla, a Model 3 specifically here. Uh, Max, any thoughts on this? Yeah, no, it's a super compelling value. I think a few more wrinkles, though, that are worth noting, like you mentioned, Francie, right? Tesla will show you those incentive prices up front. You can see when you're specking the car, you can choose between seeing the actual price and the price with incentives and estimated savings. The incentives, I find, are really relevant. Like we mentioned, the Colorado one, the federal tax credit, which this uh, Model 3 does apply for and which you can get passed on to you uh, in the form of a lease. The issue is uh, when you consider the 
fact that they also include like three thousand dollars in gas savings uh when they give you the lease after probable savings price so like you are going to see in the case of colorado okay five thousand dollars they're going to take that off the amount that you're paying in the lease which will reduce your monthly payments those gas savings you have that's not reducing your monthly payments those are savings you actually have to accrue so i wish they had a little bit more granularity or i think just to put it bluntly a little more transparency into that process i think it's great that tesla outlines all of this i still think they play a little bit fast and loose with showing you numbers that look really low nonetheless though like no matter which way you slice it this is a really competitive deal in ev world I must agree. And there are some improvements, of course, that could be made, but it does seem like they're moving in the right direction. And that is where it stands now. We've seen a lot of price drops lately from Tesla that are just absolutely turning the market on its head. Folks are, if they're really going to compete, they're really going to have to drop their prices and get creative about how they do it. But like I said, that's today. Colton, you leased a Model 3, like I said, how long ago? When did you lease your car? And specifically, why did you decide to lease it rather than to buy it yeah so i got my car i believe it was september of 2020 2021 i think it was 2021 now i was you know just starting my business up here at my new shop where we're actually at now where we film all the out of spec detailing videos and really to purchase the car at the time was kind of a stretch for me so i went okay you know what instead of buying this car let's lease it. The other thing, it was actually my first EV. I was like, I don't really know if I'm going to like this. To be honest, I got really excited about it. You look at the lease prices versus buying it and you go, wow, this is such a good savings monthly. And then you start reading the fine print. You actually get into this and you go, okay, wow. Um, you're basically locked in with Tesla. Now, not like most leases, you can't really get out of them. You still can get out of the Tesla lease, but I just sent over to Francie my actual lease termination as of today, what it would be to get out of my Model 3 long range, and it is truly insane. So I have this car basically through September of 2024. You can see your gross cap cost there. That was what I actually paid for my Model 3 long range, which is basically what you can get a Model 3 performance for right now. And again, keep in mind, this is leasing it. So so right now, if I were to want to get out of my Model 3, I would have to send Tesla basically $9,800 to get out of it. And this basically, again, runs through September of 2024. So instead, I'm just like, okay, I'm just going to continue to pay the monthly payment on this thing. I'm going to use it as a spare vehicle. But the really frustrating thing with the Tesla leasing, you can't buy it out at the end and you can't really get out of it financially reasonably, if you will. Um, I will share some other things that I've done in the past with other vehicles. My wife and I have leased multiple vehicles through Volkswagen, some Tiguans. I had a Volkswagen Alltrack, and I actually got out of those cars pretty reasonably. One of them being when the market was really, really high. Cars were very hard to come by, and dealers were really looking for vehicles to buy back and sell. I actually ended up making about $5,000 on a lease um, that I did on a Volkswagen Alltrack, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take that money and put it into this particular Tesla that I leased. At mm -hmm. the time, it was like, okay, this makes all the sense in the world. And now I'm sitting here with a spare car that I don't really want. I'm not going to pay Tesla, you know, that $9,800. So I'm kind of stuck just paying monthly for it. Mm. That's pretty disappointing, especially when there's such a high price point to get out of a situation that you really want out of. And of course, it, it seems like Tesla's just really not trying to lose a buck here at all. And I'm just going to bring up, this is from the tesla.com support leasing, end lease early. So ending your lease early, there are a few options available. Although it can be costly, an early lease termination is allowed if you have one or more lease payments remaining. So that's a pretty big headache from you. And I'm kind of getting the impression that you might not suggest to lease from Tesla. Uh, I mean, what would you, are you pro, con, maybe depending on the situation? 
Well, I think we need to understand where the car market's gone recently. So, for example, we just bought a Volkswagen ID4 last November. Um, now, that current car, we are essentially underwater on. Um, if we were to go and try and sell it right now, we are basically going to take a $20,000 bath on that vehicle. So, this is really challenging to negotiate, navigate, and see where everything is going. Um I would say if you are a person who plans to keep your car for a long time, willing to make the monthly payments, something like this Model 3 lease that you brought up at the beginning of the podcast is fantastic. I am one of those people who is a little bit ADD and uh, likes to get new stuff and I get bored of things and I'm you know, ready for a new car. My wife has already basically not even a year into her ID4, already wanting something else. This is why I've been researching what it is to get out of our current car. So it really depends on the market, and it's very hard to play this game, especially when you have what I kind of feel that Teslas are as a disposable vehicle. And I hate to say that, but they really are. This is not something that, um, you know, they're not easily replaceable. You're not investing it money into it to make money on something like a Porsche GT3, for example, that I have, you know, a ton of customers do that for a different reason. This is basically an appliance. You are purchasing it to drive it, use it, and then eventually you are going to be selling it and normally at a loss. So it's very challenging to kind of negotiate this. Now, if you were to pose me with the question, Should I have leased my car when I did? I would say absolutely yes, because it's opened up a ton of doors for me for, you know, doing this whole out of spec thing. At the time, I couldn't afford to purchase the car that I wanted. So it really made sense for me to lease it. And, you know, everybody's financial situation is, of course, completely different. But it is quite frustrating if you do have something come up. Maybe you lose a job and now you can no longer afford that Tesla payment. You have this big nut that you have to pay for. Whereas if you purchase this car, yes, you may take a hit, but you would be able to quickly sell it and move into something more financially um, viable for yourself. I think that is a great point when folks are put into a really tough situation and there is no way out. And of course, you're entering into a contract with an automaker when you go to lease or buy a car, but it can really put folks in a tough position. And I also like that you turn lemons into lemonade, of course. Maybe the lease hasn't turned out to be the you know best lease on a car that you've had, but like you said, it opened up doors. And Max, I wanted to ask you what you thought about this point that Colton made that it's disposable. You know, I don't think we hear that thrown around a lot, but it is, you know, it is a an appliance i mean you you make some points but max what do you think yeah i mean that's both a good and a bad thing it's good in the sense that like teslas are increasingly very accessible as are more evs but teslas really led the charge here uh but it is absolutely an appliance it saves you money in the long run and yet a model 3 or a model y no one is going to say that vehicle is going to be as special as anything porsche really that you can customize and obsess over the paint and cosmetics and color i mean yes people Uh, customize and wrap their Teslas, but ultimately these are increasingly commodity products. And with their commodity products, like Colton was saying, with the market have been just depreciating rapidly. These are kinds of conditions that are really, really hard to predict. It's good news for buyers right now. It's bad news for people like, you know, you have equity on ID4. I have equity on my Polestar 2 loan. I would also be upside down right now if I tried to sell it because things are just depreciating so quickly in EV world. I also want to bring up the wrinkle of when you are leasing with EVs, we're seeing Tesla does this. Uh, brands also not give you the option to not just you know not terminate the lease without a huge fee, but let's say you have the cash down and you like the car and you do want to buy it. Maybe to you it's not disposable, or you'll know you'll you know want to drive it for a while to come. Uh, they don't let you do that. They don't let you buy out the car at the end of the lease. Like let's say after 36 months, I'm ready to keep going with this car. Nope, you can't do that. Uh, Ford's followed suit with Tesla, I believe, several years ago. And that's the case now. If you try to lease an F-150 Lightning or a Mach-E, you will not be able to buy it out. So uh, you had this flexibility before in leasing traditionally in car world. And with EVs, manufacturers have basically found convenient ways to get around that. Tesla just, you know, that's the way it is. Ford gave some environmental justification saying they want to make sure the batteries are properly disposed of and looked after. But of course, right, this is ultimately you signing a contract. And uh, in the case of many of these leases, having fewer rights than you even used to. Mm-hmm. Really interesting uh, points about, yeah, you're 
you don't get to lease to own. And that really just means you're using this temporarily at um, a cost to yourself. You're really renting the vehicle without building that equity. So of course, we've mentioned how the EV space has changed. It will continue to change dramatically. Sometimes it feels like on a dime. But so Colton, of course, we have your perspective where the lease you know, maybe uh, you you summarized basically your takeaway. But today, should someone, do we think, buy or lease a Tesla, not only based on your experience and kind of these cons, but based on also the prices that we see from Tesla today also to buy outright? Yeah, I think, think the... Or Colton. Sorry. Uh, I think one thing people need to take consideration of is the federal tax credit. So, Just full transparency, I ended up buying a brand new Model 3 Performance about, I guess, a month and a half ago. And I decided to purchase it solely based on the idea that I didn't have the greatest lease experience because I'm already ready to change cars. And I really wanted to take advantage of the amazing tax credits, especially that we have here in Colorado. Now, again, Tesla pricing has been all over the place. I ended up getting my car as an inventory vehicle, another $4,000 off MSRP. Then you take into consideration $7,500 from federal tax credit and $5,000 on top of that here in Colorado. And it was just like, okay, this is really a no brainer for me to do at this time. Um, yeah, I just think it's it's kind of all over the place and it's very, very hard to make this decision. I think, again, if you plan to keep the car for at least three years, so you do a 36-month lease, you know you're going to stay under that mileage cap, which was another deciding factor for me to purchase another Model 3. As you can see there on that screenshot, I'm at 24,800 miles or so. I have 30,000 miles on my lease. So I only have, you know, roughly 5,000 miles until September of 2024. So I knew I was going to be over miles on that. It's 25 cents a mile. Now, yes, that does sound like a lot. But when you also put it in perspective, it's actually cheaper than it really seems like it is. For example, I have an 05 Audi Allroad. It literally costs me more in gas to put money in that Allroad than it does to pay the overage mileage on my leased Model 3. So if you put another 10,000 miles on your leased vehicle from Tesla, it's 2,500 bucks. In all reality, to drive 10,000 miles, $2,500 is really not that much money um, considering you know gas and things like that. So. It's, it's a tough one. I think people need to outweigh um, their pros and cons, what they're looking for. Of course, the automotive market, even around Teslas and what the valuation of, you know, older Model 3s are, is kind of upside down right now. So, you know, purchasing a car, yes, it may be good at this time, but what is that car going to be worth in three, four, five, six years when you're ready to go sell it? Is it going to be $15,000? Is it going to be $30,000? It's really hard to predict the future. The nice thing with the lease is it's a structured payment. You know, after three years, boom, I'm going to go cash myself in and get another one. Good to go. So outweighing those pros and cons are a challenging thing. Definitely. I think there's a lot to consider. And I appreciate your perspective because you can, of course, weigh the pros and cons, but having a lived experience with it definitely adds some details because I'm sure we also have audience members who are considering what their options are and what the experience will be like. And you might not have read the fine print or really heard that there are um, incentives or they de-incentivize you to end your lease and that you're, you're kind of locked in until until they they let you out. But then, of course, with the lower and lower prices for taking out a loan, but also the high interest rates, there's just a lot of moving parts to consider. And it's really not making it very easy. Max, do you agree? Yeah, it's not easy, to be honest. I mean, leasing has traditionally made sense, ironically, in being a more flexible option in the sense of, oh, every three years, like Golden was saying, I have this fixed payment and I know what I can do. Well, an EV, sometimes that itself is a burden. Having the extra liquid and the ability to always sell is great, and yet it's also hot potato. You could be caught with a car that, uh, going back to the note of disposability, is in some ways technologically obsolete several years down the road. For a non-Tesla vehicle, this could be seen as, let's say, having a Chatamo or a CC 
CCS port instead of a Tesla connector. On a Tesla, five years from now, when there is, you know, two newer generations of Model 3, uh, then your Model 3 probably will not seem that special. And in that case, you may prefer to lease where you don't have to deal with a market that absolutely doesn't want your car. Uh, there's just so many unknowns here. But I'm still kind of, I agree with Colton, I'm leaning if you um, leading against leasing just because of the current downsides to it, especially the way Tesla structures it. I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to just build equity in a vehicle regardless. Yes, there will be uncomfortable periods. There may be periods where it'll be upside down, but ultimately it's still an asset that you can always turn around and sell to somebody else. And I like having that as an option. Great points. I think there's probably a lot of people who watch or know someone who's considering the best options for them. I do want to note that the Batteries Included podcast, which you may or may not heard of, we've had some, of course, Kyle's on that podcast. And if you tuned into a recent episode on this podcast with Dominic Yoni, that he's the host of the Batteries Included podcast, but you could check it out. And one of the segments that they're doing is, I can't remember what it's called, but they're helping to like take customer scenarios. I'm this kind of person. This is what I'm looking for in EV and find a good option for them. I'm hoping to go on soon because I'd like to know, you know, what are my options? And yeah, in general, the takeaways I get here is that there's a lot to consider. There are definite downsides to leasing uh, a Tesla specifically. And of course, you're always considering equity. And unfortunately, we don't know what the marketplace will look like in the next couple of years. But yeah, thanks for adding to the conversation, y'all. I really appreciate it. I think bringing on your lived experience, Colton, is important and hopefully really useful for people. So let us know in the comments what you think. If you have questions, maybe we can get Colton to come on into the comments below and answer them as well. Thanks, y'all, for coming on. Thank you. No problem. Tune in next time to the Out of Spec podcast. I hope you have a very, very wonderful day.